Okay. Um, I'm Gala. Nice to see everyone here. I'm excited to talk to you about an analysis that um, I did recently. So it's a bit deceiving in the title because you have to pick a title. <laughs> but really, this talk is about um, making of algorithms and uh, how it's important that we do this iteratively and collaboratively. Um, the, for context, one of the reasons I, I made this talk is because I was uh, thinking about all the time we're in the media we're talking about bias in AI. And I don't want to diminish the importance of that, but one of the things I'm seeing in my work is that local councils, uh, government, and even NGOs are using algorithms all the time, really sometimes simple ones, that are having really big impact. And I think sometimes the, the focus on the bias on AI is taking away from um, the focus on simple algorithms and how um, we can check those and how those are being made and how those are being utilized. And um, so what you're going to see here is not AI. It's just uh, routing algorithms, which we've been using and which we, we use in lots of different contexts, um, but how also they have assumptions. So uh, for background, uh, we were uh, working uh, in Scotland and um, we're doing, we were working with local councils and uh, the main topic we were thinking about was the 20-minute city. And uh, in particular, in Scotland, this has been kind of coded into law, like uh, local councils have to think about uh, how their town, how you know their areas are, are meeting the 20-minute city. Um, so it's something that they have to think about and that they're all uh, reporting on in some way or another and they're doing analysis on this. So it's, it's quite important and it's, it's having impact in the actions that they are taking. So pragmatically, uh, the analysis we have in question is uh, I have a neighborhood and I want to understand like can people just reach a supermarket via walking um, in 20 minutes? Um, it, and exactly how they reach it and all the detail about this is coming up. But I want you to take that question and just keep it in your mind because obviously that's what we're trying to answer. Um, so I'm just going to run you through the logic of how does one answer this question if you're a local council. So the most generic approach you could take is uh, you would take your town or your neighborhood and you would plot a point at the center of it. Then you draw a radius, um, and lots of us have seen this in multiple reports. And somewhere in there, you would plot your supermarkets. And if the supermarkets are inside your radius, tick, we meet it, supermarkets are there. And if they're not, then we don't meet it, or maybe there's only one, maybe that's bad. Um, a more realistic way would be to actually consider, well, if I started this center, where can I reach to in 20 minutes? And then use that network and say any supermarket alongside that network uh, you know, counts. Obviously, that's going to be, as we all know, a smaller area. Um, and then we can say, OK, well, in that network, we have five supermarkets, so tick, we, we do it. Um, and uh, as a geospatial data scientist, I'm like, OK, I can see loads of problems with that. So OK, not everyone lives in the center of town. <laughs> and in particular, uh, sometimes the most deprived people do not live in the center of town. So if we consider it that way, we might say, yes, our town meets this criteria. But actually, there's a lot of populations we're uh, not doing justice to. So let's think about that problem. And let's say, OK, well, you know, I have census data. And so I have census zones. So now I'm going to take all my census zones. In each one, I'm going to go to the center of it. And then I'm going to draw my circle. Same issue as before. But at least now, we have multiple circles that we are considering. Um, and a more realistic one, kind of alongside that, is to take the center of each area and then use the paths. And so obviously, you can see the progression, and that's more realistic. Um, but hey, we are going to run into a problem that all of these areas are now strange looking, and they're not very comparable. And actually, I think the talk right before this talked about that. Uh, and this is. This is something that local councils are grappling with and that they have to do all the time. Um, as an example here, this is a bunch of towns in Scotland. And um, I, I like Scotland because it's, it's, it's rural, a lot of it. And because it's rural, the areas of these little areas, or census areas, as you can see in the center of town, they can be quite small uh, because they want to optimize for how many people are in each area. But on the edges, they can get really huge. And so now we are comparing, if we go to the center of that area, and I'm just going to go back, you know, if you go to the center of a really big area, sometimes your circle doesn't even cover some of that area. 
And so that's very, very problematic. Because if people live over there, you're going to say, hey, you know, our, you know, this census area does meet the criteria. Um, when it really didn't even consider half of the area that it was spanning. So let's just go back, take a second to breathe. What were we actually trying to compute? We want people can meet their needs within a 20 minute walk from their house. And why are we doing this? Because it enables people to live better, healthier lives and supporting our net zero ambitions. For me, what I hear when I work with our clients is they need to get people walking because that is good for everyone in multiple dimensions. Topic for another talk. <laughs> um, and people need to have access to what they need. And OK, if we think about that, and we go back to our algorithm then, the reality is when we're plotting these radiuses, we're not really thinking in the center about people. In the center, we're thinking about a geographic location. And so we can twist that. So. OK, what would be better is if we could take every single building that we see in our town, and then someone walks out the door of that building, we compute all the paths that they can go to as far as they can go in 20 minutes, and then we see, for that specific building, how many supermarkets can you reach? And that would let us first, if we do that for every single building here, it would let us understand some spatial patterns, like is there areas that are really getting screwed? It would let us track change. If I plot a supermarket here, how does that change? Does that now meet the criteria? And it would let us focus our efforts, because the reality is there's not a limited budget. If I'm trying to understand who is deprived from this particular question of the 20-minute city in my town, then I cannot go and uh, focus on every single part of my town. I might only have resources to do it for a small piece. And so understanding strategically where I can focus my efforts can be really valuable. So that's what we did. <laughs> um, so let me explain what's in this slide. But there's a lot of information. Um, this is a 20-minute city, well, 20-minute neighborhood. It's computed. So for each of these buildings, we computed that path. And we counted how many along all of those paths, no matter in which direction they go, uh, how many supermarkets could they reach. Um, and so for just more technically minded people, the data is from OpenStreetMap. Uh, that includes points of interest, buildings, and the network. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's actually really good. Um, and that's also a topic for another talk, why OpenStreetMap data is really useful in these kinds of calculations. Uh, because if this was being uh, positioned for citizens, and they were like, actually, that's missing a supermarket, they could tomorrow go plot that supermarket themselves, and then you could just update the analysis and then see the results. So um, that's a, re a really kind of active way to uh, engage them in the analysis. The other thing it's using, um, which we're going to talk about later, it's using, I'm using the OS uh, terrain elevation data. By supermarket, because it's uh, small towns, I'm not just thinking of a big supermarket. I'm also including convenience shops uh, uh, and grocers, because mostly it's, do they have access to food. Um, it assumes a 1.25 uh, meters uh, per second speed which is actually slower than what is usually used. Uh, most people use 1.4, um, but we have found that that's uh, quite fast, and um, so that's why we're going for this. And I put here, it's 20 minutes one way. So there's no perfect definition of the 20-minute city. Some people say 20 minutes, and what they mean is the supermarket has to be 20 minutes away, and some people say 20 minutes, and that means 20 minutes round trip. We've opted, uh, and mostly by WSAI, have opted for 20 minutes one way. And the reason is because uh, Scottish towns are not very dense. And so if you do 20 minutes uh, round trip, all you get is the center of town. Uh, so in here, to make you know, an interesting analysis, we're also considering 20 minutes uh, one way. Uh, and the direction that I have here is from supermarket to a building. Now. If everything is flat and everything, and because we're walking and we can walk in both directions, uh, it doesn't matter which direction you're traveling, but in the later of the talk, it will matter. And the reason uh, I have chosen to use the, from the supermarket to a building is because when you walk back from the supermarket, you are carrying stuff. And so really, when I'm going to the supermarket and I'm thinking, do I need to buy milk? <laughs> that is going to matter which mode of transport I use. Because if I have to buy milk and detergent, I'm probably going to take the car because it's hard to carry it. Uh, but you know, when I'm getting there, probably whatever. 
Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a more difficult uh, trip. Therefore, that's what we're considering. So these are three towns, and um, basically the redder that you get, it means you have access to more supermarkets, and the bluer that you get, uh, less. And if it's white, it means none. Uh, so uh, you can already start seeing some distinct patterns. Um, but let's get interesting. Uh, lots of things affect our paths. There's uh, busy streets, some people avoid them, some people prefer them. There's safety, there's pavement conditions, there's infinite list here. Uh, and one of them is hills. And one of the things uh, I think is really important when we talk about algorithms that are used for strategic purposes is we're not gonna have data for everything. And if we try to get data for everything, we best be really rich. Since we're not, then we have to focus our efforts on the data that is there, include that one, and as n new data sources come on, then we bring them. But also the strategic direction can, s can help us say, you know what, this, this algorithm is good enough, but we do actually need this particular data set, then we should go and gather it. Then we should go and invest resources into including it. But it's not always necessary, and a lot of times the new data sets um, maybe make your algorithm more muddled, or uh, sometimes they actually don't really show any impact. And so this idea that like more data, you know, everything is better in your algorithm is not necessarily true. And we can see that across lots of different technologies, including AI. So it's, it's, it's important that, um, yeah. So in this talk, I'm, in, I'm talking about including hills. So here's an example. If, I, if I'm walking to the, the supermarket home, you know, and everything is flat and perfect, I can get there in 15 minutes according to the algorithm. But in the reality that uh, people in, in many Scottish towns live is that they're actually getting home and they're going up the hill. And so uh, we were trying to find a, a parameter that would help us, well, what happens? Like how fast do people, I thought there would be a speed that uh, I would find from research that would say, okay, actually when people go uphill, this is the speed they go to, but wrong. Uh, that's actually quite hard to find. And the numbers I did find uh, mostly come from hiking. So, okay. Let's talk about hiking, and um, this is Kidlochry, which I've shown you. And uh, the red over there means more hill. Um, the scale is going from zero meters in blue to 200 meters in red. Um, and we're gonna consider uh, this rule called Naismith's rule, which was actually, uh, came up with it by a Scottish person, so I thought that was really nice and relevant. And what uh, Naismith told us is like, okay, when you're hiking, if you want to estimate how long it's going to take you, every time uh, you go up, your path goes up one meter in elevation. You should add six seconds to your total time. And this is a, a rule of thumb. It's not perfect. We can talk about all the details, but it's a nice rule, and we can implement it. So we did that for Pidlochry, and you can see here, um, it, we start seeing the edges of town. Obviously, they're really tall ones. They're really high ones. Uh, we stop having, they stop having access. And Mostly, I want you to focus on the buildings that go from having access to something to having access to nothing. Because um, when you have access to, to nothing, that's when you can choose to have a different mode of transport. If you still have access to something, for a lot of your trips, you might still select to walk. Um, so this was all good in games, but um, it can get better. And one of the things that uh, I realize often when I use Google Maps is that it tells me 15 minutes, but that's 15 minutes, and I best be walking at speed. Like, I cannot, like, chill and slow down and, and look at my surroundings. And so um, what we did here is we said, okay, let's take Naismith's rule. That, was, that, was, that rule was made for hikers, their feet, and also they're not carrying all the, necessarily all their bags back from the supermarket like I am which are uncomfortable, they maybe have really comfy bags. So um, most people, and what we did is we added 18 seconds for every one meter. So that's like three times as hard as what Na Naismith says. And okay, now we can start seeing that some communities right at the edge are like fully cut off from access. And it's not like cut off like, oh, they don't have water. But this is, these are communities where if we're trying to get people to walk in town, maybe these are the communities we need to go talk to and we need to work out, do they need a local shop? Do they need better paths? Do they need um, maybe more bus routes? Uh, and, but it's now it's allowing us to be uh, focused in, in who we need to talk to. And then, um, I was actually talking about, about this um, 
with my mom when she was over visiting me. And I live in Edinburgh where there's loads of hills. And uh, my husband and I, when we want to understand how long it's going to take my mom to get somewhere, we usually do like, you know, times three or times four because she really, really struggles going up the hill. Um, and she really struggles actually going down the hill, which is something that we see often with people who are mobility impaired. And so, well, we have this rule, we're going with it, so we included that. And um, what we did is we added the 30 seconds uh, for every meter of elevation gain, because we're kind of trying to make this uh, a little bit more difficult in the algorithm, and then 18 seconds for every meter of elevation loss. And what you now see, first, uh, the pattern shows me that all the supermarkets uh, are probably very close together, because the buildings that are in the center, they're not even losing color, right? Like, they're staying in the, like, access to five or more. Uh, and so most supermarkets must be exactly there. And the other thing I'm seeing is that um, the whole, that whole area of pit lockery is now, uh, you know, not able to access. And so for me, if I am talking to this local council and I'm trying to understand, hey, um, are you meeting the 20-minute city and what are you doing about it? These is the areas that I would ask them, like, who lives there? And uh, can we reach out to them? Because it's important that uh, they get a different uh, support than the ones maybe in the center. Um, we did this for lots of towns. I'm only showing you one town because it was, it was an easier story. But here's another town. Uh, this is Oban. Um, and in Oban, what I find very interesting is that as you progress, um, you have these close kind of uh, communities that uh, don't have a lot of roads in between them, probably because of the hills. And um, they are really nice targets to have a shop there uh, because then it can be used by kind of that whole sectioned area of the town. So um, in, in particular, one of the reasons uh, this algorithm came to my mind was changing it was because when we were talking to many of the towns in Scotland, what they were saying to us is that the 20 minute city to them didn't apply. And that was because peop there was hills. And so for me, uh, exposing them to something like this requires them to think further, like, okay, well, now that we can see it in the algorithm, does it apply? And can we have it apply? And what is the algorithm missing for it to apply? Um, so the last question I had uh, is, uh, what are the weightings? You know, I made up some, we made up some seconds. We said times three, times five. Um, but how do we know we've got it right? Um, and I guess the answer is we don't. Uh, this algorithm is missing a lot of parts, but uh, I believe that the answer of getting it right depends locally, and it should be one that gets chosen locally. And so uh, one of the things that um, we're doing at Diagonal is, is all of this data with our clients, we present it um, interactively and in a way in which they can choose the parameters. And to me, that's very important because uh, imagine going to a local council, uh, showing them this map, and then saying, okay, you play with the parameters. You play for how, how, much, how bad it should be to walk uphill. How bad should it be to walk downhill? And then collaboratively, let's decide what those are. Because the reality also has to do with the demographics of the town. If this town has more elderly people, then we might want to consider uh, some weights that are really high. And if this town uh, is, is, doesn't have that type of demographic, we might need to consider two versions of the algorithm to understand it, how it meets the 20-minute city for different people. And so my closing thought is one. You need iteration to drill down into the practical details. A, a lot of times, uh, people thinking in strategic, they don't want details, but actually it's the detail in the algorithm that lets you understand how well it's meeting uh, the need of the question it's trying to answer. Um, iteration and consultation go hand in hand. We cannot refine the algorithm uh, in our desk. We have to define it with people, and people have to be able to see the results. And in my opinion, that means playing with the results. Um, the visualization is crucial, uh, especially in geospatial data. If you're not able to visualize it, uh, I could have given you, for example, a graph of how many buildings had access to five plus buildings, but I chose not to do that because uh, what's the difference if I tell you a thousand buildings or a thousand and five? That's, uh, you know, what we want to understand is the spatial pattern. Um, the next thing is that exploring is part of the experience. And so being able to explore all the different things that are happening in the algorithm and play with the parameters, that is what gets people to understand what algorithms are being used to decide things about their town. 
and that in itself gives them tr um, trust into that into that algorithm. Um, there's a non-trivial computation effort, and that's very important because this is a reason I believe most local councils choose to do the radius approach. And uh, maybe the thought I want to put out there is like, uh, you know, we do this, but lots of uh, there's lots of ways to do this, but the computation is here and we can use it. And so that is the kind of stuff where we should be using computation uh, in our favor. And um, the last thing is like these algorithms need oversight too because they have a big impact. This affects a local plan that then lasts five years. And so that's five years that your local council is gonna make decisions based on a report they did on a radius. Uh, and so for, for me, uh, that, that is quite impactful. Uh, and it's, is, you know, it's something that we, we need to put more thought and kind of technical detail behind. And that's it, thank you.